Hi, I'm Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to the construction portion of our faux knitting dog coat. We are going to create squares of fabric. You have already created the embroidery design that we're going to stitch our yarns together with, and then we will take these squares, and we've done 5 by 5 inch squares, and we will sew them together to create a large enough piece of fabric. Now the first thing we need to do is get all of our supplies together. Now I used a Jenny Haskins faux knitting kit which included the yarn and Dissolve Magic Sticky. If you decide that you would like to buy one of those kits, they are available through your dealer. You can view the color schemes by going to www.rnkdistributing.com, click on the Jenny Haskins portion and then go and look at her kits. If you choose to buy your own yarns, you're going to need approximately six skeins. Now, if you notice, I have two skeins of a very thick, slubby yarn. I have two skeins of a eyelash yarn. Then I have two additional skeins of yarn that are just to add texture to our faux knitting. You will also need a roll of wet and gone tacky or Dissolve Magic Sticky by Jenny Haskins, and some Dream Weave Fusible by Floriani, or Your Sheer Magic by Jenny Haskins. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our Wet and Gone Tacky. Now, in our software portion of this, we created a 5 by 5 inch square of fabric. To stitch out your first one, you can certainly cut enough stabilizer to fit your hoop. Now what I did is I cut a 40 inch, 48 inch long piece of wet and gone tacky and I just continued to re-hoop as I went down, thus saving me stabilizer and yarn. But for this exercise you can cut just enough for your hoop. Now make sure you cut two pieces the same size. We are going to peel the paper backing away from the wet and gone tacky being very careful to keep your stabilizer flat and you want the tacky side facing up. The next thing I did was I folded under about an inch at each end so that I had an inch folded backwards and I could stick that down to my cutting table. And I really do suggest using a cutting mat so you can see your lines to make sure that you've got your yarn laid out in the center and that it measures about six inches wide by a minimum of six inches long. Now remember, we're going to hoop this. If you want to make the stabilizer longer so you can continue to rehoop, feel free to do so. But you will notice here how I have stuck that down and I also stuck the other end down. So now I don't have that sliding around my table as I try to stick my yarns to it. Now the next thing you want to do is pull out your yarns and you will lay them down in the pattern that you want. And you can see how I kind of just varied my pattern and actually I would grab three or four strands of yarn at once and I want you to stick them down to your wet and con tacky starting at the center. Now if this is on your cutting table or on a cutting mat then you can very easily see your center because I'm using 12 inch wide, my center would be at the 6 inch mark. And I'm going to start and I'm going to go 3 inches in one direction and then 3 inches in the other to make sure I've covered. Now I want you to pack your yarn densely. I don't want any of the stabilizer showing through because remember, we are creating an actual piece of fabric. Once you get this down, make sure that as you are sticking your yarn down, not to make the mistake of stretching it. What that will do is once you stick it to the wet and gone tacky, it is going to pull in, causing your stabilizer to ruffle. You want it to lay flat. Once you've got them all stuck down, I want you to notice I am taking a ruler and I'm measuring to make sure that I'm six inches across. Now we are making a five inch square, but that gives us a little wiggle room if we hoop it a little crooked, we want to make sure that we get a solid stitch down 5 inch square of fabric.
Then you will go ahead and if you notice, I've lifted up the end that I had turned under. I've lifted it up and now I've got all the sticky facing up. We're going to take our second piece of wet and gone tacky that you cut and I want you to peel about three inches away of the paper and then stick those three inches down at matching the raw edges at the top and the sides and once you've got that stuck down nice and flat go ahead and peel your paper away sticking your wet and gone tacky down and you want tacky sides together we're creating a yarn sandwich so we want that yarn encased in between the two pieces and I want you to stick it down very carefully smoothing it as you go and making sure it's stuck down around all the edges once we have done that we are going to hoop our yarn sandwich now again I've mentioned here that I cut mine 48 inches long because I knew I, how much fabric I wanted I wanted to create this dog coat and I wanted to make sure that I could create about a yard of fabric so I didn't want to create a bunch of small squares this way I could just rehoop it as I went along and then I can cut them apart later and it made it much easier because I stretched my yarn out all at once I also put my template on top after I had hooped my yarn sandwich just to make sure I have my yarn centered very nicely in the hoop because it's real difficult you're not going to be able to mark this as easily so by using my template I made sure I had it in the right place before I took it to my machine and stitched it out once you are finished stitching this whether you're doing one square or you're continuing to scoot it down and hoop along the hoop go ahead and stitch it out and then we're going to trim our stabilizer away close around the edges because we're going to need to rinse this out and there's no need to have all that extra stabilizer to wash away when we can trim it very close to the yarn I used my ruler to make sure I didn't get wild with my rotary cutter and accidentally cut into one of my squares now we're going to rinse it out and I'm going to recommend that you use fabric softener now if you don't have hard water or you have a water softening system that's not necessary but if you're not sure um, when you're going to get out wet and gone tacky or you're taking dissolve magic sticky if you're going to rinse those out we have got an adhesive in there and in order to put that adhesive on top of a water soluble stabilizer we have to have a layer that's going to protect the stabilizer from the adhesive and if you have hard water that protection layer will turn into little bitty balls and they're, they'll make it a little more difficult to get it out by, by adding a little bit of fabric softener it will break that up very easily now I rinsed mine out very well in the sink I rinsed it about three or four times then I went ahead and threw it into my washer I went ahead and washed it, brought it out, that way it had washed all the stabilizer out and I knew that my fabric had held together nicely. And then I took it to the ironing board. Now we're going to iron our Dreamweave Fusible or your Sheer Magic to the back of the square. Now what I did is I did mine of course in a strip as I told you but I would lay all my squares next to each other if you've done them singly because you have a smaller hoop and I would iron that along the back and then trim them apart later but make sure you do it on the wrong side the bobbin side of your faux fabric and go ahead and iron that on once we've done that I then went to my serger and you can see here where I have made sure that I have put the Dreamweave Fusible on the back and I have fused it down well. I love to use the serger and this was a perfect project for my serger. I used a four thread overlock stitch and I put my squares right sides together and I serged them together using about the quarter of an inch seam just from your blade over. Once I had created this piece of fabric, sewn these all together, I took another piece of Dreamweave Fusible 
and ironed it over the entire piece of fabric, a solid piece. That way I iron down my seams real well, as well as making sure I have a good stable piece of fabric. Then I went ahead and I cut out my pattern. Now I made a dog coat. You could choose to make a purse, a shrug, a shawl, a scarf. The, the possibilities are endless. But I cut it out and I used McCall's pattern M5738 and once you cut it out go ahead and construct using the pattern directions now don't forget you're also going to, going to have to cut out a lining fabric I chose a, a very lightweight fleece you could use a flannel or anything for the inside of this to go against your dog now here's two views of my coat once it was finished and around the edge that that pattern called for us to bind the edges of this I went ahead and used woolly nylon and my serger and I went ahead and searched around all the edges of this making a nice pretty edge on this because woolly nylon will expand and fill in so that it looks like a nice solid edge and I wanted to do that rather than bind the coat now I will tell you um, go on to Jenny's website the Jenny Haskins website you can get to it again through www.rnkdistributing.com and Jenny has a new book called When Dreams Fly she has cre created an entire quilt she's got a coat she has the patterns for everything in this book and if you enjoy faux knitting this book has lots of wonderful wonderful ideas now this is baby she hates dog clothes but I want you to enjoy your faux knitting technique thank you so much for coming to this month's project of the month and I look forward to seeing you again next month